Hey guys, what is up? Dave here with a brand new video on the channel. And as you can see, it's another cell phone video. Now this isn't just one of your ordinary cell phones because I wanted to grab something that's extremely weird, far out there, not your typical everyday phone that you would do a custom ROM to or something like that. This is the K-Touch i9, possibly the smallest Android phone on the market that comes with Android 8.1 pre-installed, which means GSIs are compatible. If you don't exactly understand what the GSI is, uh, you could watch my previous video about why you should unlock your boot bootloader and install custom ROMs on virtually every Android device possible. So to first put it in perspective, let me show you how small this phone actually is. So this is my Razer gaming phone, my Razer 2. This is an essential phone uh, for your old school folks. This is a Galaxy S5. And if you really want to get crazy, here's a dollar bill, a US dollar bill or scale. This is a very small phone. What does this look like on camera? This is a very small phone. This thing is smaller than a Pokemon card. If you really want that reference. Uh, I have a ton of cards. Uh, here we go. Almost smaller than a Pokemon card. About the same size. If you put it on the device, it's a little bigger than the Pokemon card. I thought it was the same size. So, why are we talking about this phone today? Because in a recent video where I talked about why it's good to unlock your bootloader, why it's good to have a custom ROM on your phone, etc., etc., the advantages of it. Um, I said I would make a video about putting a GSI on a phone that's a very obscure device to really prove my point and hammer it home. Now, this device is pretty special. Its system, uh, system memory or system partition is not that big, so you actually have to do a few extra steps to get it to work. But there's also a custom ROM out there for this device, uh, Lineage OS 17.1 that you can also put on this phone, and that's Android 10. I have another one of these that is running Android 10 already. Fantastic phone. But let's uh, look at the uh, specs of this device real quick. Oh, I already closed it. K-Touch i9, DSM Arena, does not have it listed, that's right. So 800 by 340 pixel, eight megapixel camera on the back. It's a five megapixel camera on the front. This is the 3 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte storage model. Um, Android 8.1, 1000 milliamp hour battery. Not a very big device. Should work on Verizon and stuff like that. Very cool phone. Now, if you want to run TWRP on this and do all that jazz, it does have to be compat. It does or 17.0. Sorry. It does need to be compatible with this specific CPU. There are multiple CPUs for this device. There's uh, the 68, uh, 6580 CPU, which you can see right there for the K-Touch i9. Somebody also created. Uh, there's a couple different uh, versions of this. But if you want to run this specific Lineage OS ROM, you have to be on... 67 uh, MT6739 and let me show you how to actually see what CPU you have so first of all you do have to plug it into your system you need to enable developer settings and turn on USB debugging which very tiny phone I'll show you real quick if I can so to get to USB debugging and all that you go to about phone you have to type build number at the bottom here multiple times. As you can see, I'm already a developer. And then you hit back, 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 I say. This phone's so small. Uh, and you'll have developer options. Then you want to enable OEM unlocking if you plan on unlocking the bootloader. And then also USB debugging is right there. 
enable that, and then it will ask you for authorization. Once you plug it into the computer, say yes, and you're good to go. There's apparently an i10. That's four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. I kind of want to get one. Anyway, so to figure out what CPU you have, do ADB get prop. I forget what the command is. Hold on. I literally forgot one word. ADB shell get prop. And this will tell you everything about your phone, but you can actually go through this. Uh, OEM unlock allowed is right there. You can see it's enabled. Um, you can actually go through here and eventually you will find information of what your CPU is. So as you can see, we do have ARM 64 V8A available on this device. So this is a 64 bit device. So I actually downloaded the wrong ROM. Um, <laughs> hold on, we need ARM 64A only. Let me download this real quick while we're recording. We're doing it live, boys and girls. Um, I'll get back to what this is in a minute. Uh, oh yeah, we're looking at this. So we can scroll up and through. And it is in here somewhere. I forget exactly where. There it is, uh, RO MediaTek MT6739. So it'll be under platform. So now we know that this is compatible and we can put TWRP on here, do a full backup and be safe in case we destroy the device. So let's install TWRP, very simple. You simply come to this post. I highly doubt anybody who watches this video is actually gonna do it. You simply download the TWRP from here. ADB reboot recovery. And I am also working on software to try to automate this entire process. Uh, it already works for the essential phone. I'll make a video in the future on that. Uh, there it goes, it's booting now. I meant to say bootloader, but we're already in here. So reboot to bootloader because we have to unlock the device completely. So once it's in fast boot or bootloader, you do fast boot, OEM, unlock, critical, I believe are the commands for this one. I don't have drivers installed. Update, browse, let me pick, Android. Google bootloader, yes. I just realized my audio is still on. And now it sees it. So now it's asking me on the phone, do I want to OEM unlock this device? I hit volume up for yes. And it'll reboot to fast boot. And now you need to do OEM unlock. And that unlocks the device entirely. Bootloader unlocked completely all said and done perfect so now we want to do the recovery so you do fast boot flash recovery and we need twrp for this go recovery hit enter and it's going to install the recovery so you can do fast boot reboot recovery and it will boot to the recovery that you have now installed so twrp should open up it will take a second. Remember, it's a really tiny phone. Now it will give the orange state error that the bootloader is unlocked. It will auto bypass this pretty much every single time you deal with it or any every single time you turn it on or restart it. It'll wait for about five seconds at the screen and then start the boot process to whatever you told it to boot. In this case, it was supposed to be recovery and it's just booting the system. <laughs> So we're going to do ADB reboot recovery here in a moment. I think the first time I did this, it also took a second. You had to like fully boot cycle the device, but that's okay. It's probably because I didn't do a reboot and uh, erase after unlocking the bootloader. So this might take a while. 
because it has to like deodex everything and all that. I like my little ghetto setup where it's a USB C to micro USB. I love it. It's fantastic. It's the only way my computer will see Android phones now for some reason, even though the drivers are installed properly. I'm going to pause this recording while it boots. I'll come back once it's booted and everything. It it's a long first boot after you unlock a bootloader. So I got the little thing booted up, and uh, I just realized how bright the screen is. You guys probably can't see anything I do on this thing for that last part of the video where I showed you how to OEM unlock and all that. Is this better? It's a little better. So what you do, I'm already in it. Hold on. My bad. Yeah, this isn't going to work. I need a new webcam setup. Anybody want to help a brother out and uh, suggest something in the comments down below? Let me know. I'm too broke, so don't expect it for a while. But suggestions are always fantastic. So I have USB debugging enabled. I have uh, OEM unlock enabled. And the bootloader is now unlocked. So now we can do ADB reboot recovery. And it'll reboot. I should have bought a monster. I am so tired. I had Taco Bell for dinner. Taco Bell's gross. I don't know why I had Taco Bell for dinner. Okay, it didn't take the recovery. Got it. We're going to reinstall it. This happens from time to time. It's probably because I didn't boot cycle the device after unlocking the bootloader, which means it thought it took it, but it really didn't. So now that it's in fast boot, I'll just uh, flash the recovery again. And I'll actually do it by button press. Come on. Hold on. It's really hard to use this through the case. Just give me one second. I'll give you a full look over of the phone too now that we're... So we're in TWRP now. Um, it's a very nice phone. Got a headphone jack, which I can't say the same for Galaxy S20s and stuff like that. If something this small can fit a headphone jack, you bet your sorry little tushy that Samsung can fit a headphone jack into a Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. But we're going to slide to allow modifications. We're going to try to slide to allow modifications. OK, that's not going to work. We're going to just plug in and we'll do it the same way I do. Uh, the same way I do other phones, so ADB devices. So as you can see, we are now into it. You can also do just ADB shell TWRP. And you can actually see your list of commands to do stuff manually. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to do a full backup. So we're going to do ADB shell TWRP backup. I totally forgot there were all these commands. I'm going to try. I figured out last time with the, there we go. It's just really laggy, really touchy, really difficult. So now that we're in it like this, I'll still do the backup this way, but at least you know it is actually possible to use. Um, SD card, TWRP backup, and we'll name the backup factory. And you hit enter and it'll start doing the backup as you can see on screen. All right, so it's starting the backup. Backing updated data. This is probably going to take a fat minute. Actually, it's already done. 
So the backup is created. As you can see, it actually does work and it is fairly responsive. So here's like the factory uh, backup, which is boot, recovery, data, and cache. Awesome. But now what we want to do is just do a factory reset, just wipe everything. We're just gonna wipe, done. And the next thing we need to do is unmount system. So again, as you saw up here, you can do them all this way. We want to do adb shell unmount uh, twrp unmount system. Okay, we'll just do it right on the device. All right, so now it's unmounted. And we want to actually do something a little bit special because a normal GSI ROM does not fit on this device. And actually, I need this one. This is a 64-bit device. Extract. So what you want to do to actually adjust the uh, system partition is are these commands. So you want to do adb shell e2fsk-f dev block system. Oh crap, I don't know what the actual name is. Hold on, let me get that info and then I'll show you how to get that info. So I've come to realize that I actually can't use this method because I don't have these on the device. So ignore that. The best way I actually discovered to do a, uh, a, uh, a GSI on this device is actually through Fastboot. And then you come back into TWRP and you resize the partition as long as it'll take it. So what we'll want to do is go reboot bootloader if it asks you about installing the TWRP app hit no and once it's in bootloader mode or once you can start entering fast boot commands Oh my god, I can never remember the exact steps for this. Jesus Christ, hold on. You would think I would know. All right, so it's what I thought. So first you do fastboot erase system, and that'll erase the system partition. And then from there, you can do fastboot flash system with your GSI. So I'm going to do this one. Actually, I'm going to do this one because this is a 32-bit device in all technicality. And this is a smaller ROM, so this will fit. So you hit enter, and it starts trying to flash it. It'll tell you if the file is too big very quickly. So far, we can see that this is actually writing fine. So once this is complete, we'll go into TWRP and will resize the partition and that's how you can install gaps it'll basically make the partition larger so once this is done i'll come back and we'll go into twrp all right the rom is done flashing i got an okay symbol the next step that you need to do is fastboot dash w that just does a system wipe uh, basically your factory reset and now we want to do fastboot reboot recovery and this should take us to recovery to resize the partition. Now, you may be wondering, why am I trying out this GSI instead of a ROM that's specifically created for the device? Well, I already have uh, that ROM on another device, and I also just wanted to see how this works and do a video on how to flash a GSI on a very strange device, especially one as weird as this, where you even have to change partition table sizes or partition sizes, table size, I don't know. So I'm gonna let this boot to recovery, hopefully eventually. I don't think it's going to recovery.
You're seeing this live. I don't know. What is it in? ADB devices. Unauthorized. So it is trying to boot Android. ADB reboot. Hold on. We'll just get to the recovery the easy way. Or maybe I'll flash the correct ROM and not deal with this. Wait, what mode did you go into? All right, we want recovery, stupid. Take me to recovery. Take me to your leader. And TWRP, there we go. Thankful. Thankfully. We have to give it a minute to load everything. I'm just going to wait a second because it's smarter that way. All right, I'm back. So now we want to resize that partition. We go to uh, uh, wipe, advanced wipe, tag the system, hit file system options, and resize file system. And then slide it across. Oh wow, this is missing a lot of things. Now we just go back and we should be able to reboot system. So I'm going to let it sit for a minute because the first boot of a new ROM or a new GSI usually does take a while. So I'll come back to this recording once it is booted. If it doesn't boot within like five minutes, then I'll admit defeat. And who knows if this video will see the light of day. Who knows? So if you see this video, it's because sometimes you do need to learn to fail. And this is a fantastic example of that. I came into this a little too cocky, thinking a GSI ROM would work on this device. Now, I'm sure I could sit here and test multiple GSI ROMs. I'm sure there's going to be one that works. So far, neither of the two that I download work. They do not boot. Um, I've also bricked the device, so now I'm flashing the bad uh, GSI to the device, and I'll show you how to exactly fix it and then convert it to this uh, lineage OS. It's very simple at this point to convert it to lineage OS. Once we flash this uh, GSI that does let it at least boot. The other GSI did not let it boot. There was no way to even get to the recovery partition. So we actually have to go in and flash the ROM that doesn't work. And as you can see it's done. And now we have to flash recovery. Well first we need to do Dash W, and then we have to fast boot flash recovery just to make sure it's there. We'll flash recovery, and then we do. You want to do it by the button combo. I figured out for some odd reason doing fast boot reboot recovery doesn't work with this device. So you got to do it the old-fashioned way with holding some buttons for 10 to 15 seconds. So I'm going to let it boot until I get to the menu where I can select if I want recovery or fast, uh, fast boot. And I'm going to select recovery. And it should go to TWRP. Yeah, this is further along than it was getting before. So this will take it to TWRP. And you basically just have to wait for it to load everything into the RAM, and then this screen will work. So I'm going to go back, pause it again, and I'll come back in a few minutes when it lets me actually work with the phone. All right, so we're into TWRP, and I'm going to sideload my actual ROM. But first I am going to format everything. Uh, hold on a second, my girlfriend's calling me. Great timing. All right, that's fine. So we're in... Um, you want to just do a simple factory reset if it'll let me 
You gotta wait for things to load on this. It's very slow. There we go. And now what we want to do is go to ADB sideload, wipe Dalvik cache and regular cache. Once it lets me do anything. Come on. Should just do this by an ADB. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Forget it. So you can actually do a little trick and do ADB shell TWRP sideload. And that just puts it in sideload mode. And then you do ADB sideload lineage OS. Enter. And this will start sending lineage OS to the uh, device and it'll flash it. This takes a fat minute because this phone is tiny and slow. So I'll be right back. We're in boys and girls and whatever else you may be. That's the lineage boot screen. I think I'm saying it right, lineage. Uh, but yeah, that's the boot screen for lineage OS. It does take a fat minute for the first boot. I did find other places saying that the GSI should work. But again, you have to mess with partition file sizes or system sizes and other things like that. Now, one thing I want to do with this before I end off this video is put a popular game on it. I want to try to play Pokemon Go on this device. I get people who message me all the time looking for cell phones and stuff like that. They want something pre-rooted, which I'm really surprised about. I'm going to skip through the setup. There we go. We are in the Lineage OS. Uh, the only things I need to install are Lucky Patcher and Pokemon Go at this point. So give me one second. So I said I was going to try a very popular game on this phone once I had it rooted and running. It's Pokemon Go. <laughs> It, this thing is ridiculous to try to type on. I don't even know why anyone would use this phone if they plan on texting anybody. Even reading on the screen is difficult. I have pretty good eyes. I'm not even going to lie. This is hard to use. So I'm just logging in real quick. I don't want you guys to see my info, obviously. Oh, God. This is so hard to type on. It's ridiculous. I can type at like five times the speed on a normal phone. Not this. Give it credit to working at all. The fact that it has a headphone jack is astounding. But yeah, it's logging in. Trying to log in. Let me turn the volume down. Okay. This is insane. I love even trying to use this. I'll be honest. Oh my god, it's legitimately logging in. This is a test APK for maybe a future product or project that's going to be released on another forum that I'm working on with a friend. I just want to see this log in. I really do. This is going to be so dumb to try to catch a Pokemon. Come on, it's loading. Oh my god, it works. Not well. Not well at all, actually. It's still trying to load. You can't even read my username on the screen. I'm still going to cover it with my thumb. But like, we're in. I'm completely in. I don't know where I am. Probably somewhere in New York. I'd like to know where I am in case I open up Pokemon Go in a little bit on my other phone. It's trying to spawn in Pokemon on the map. It's not working. 
This is ridiculous. Everything is running at like 15 frames per second. Okay, let me rephrase, two frames per second. But this phone's awesome. Honestly, using it for like a little music device or something like that is gonna be absolutely awesome. I can't wait to actually try it. Um, I'm gonna close Pokemon Go before I just utterly ruin this phone. The RAM was probably already full, let's be real. So, But, yeah, that's that's uh, me messing with the K-Touch i9. Uh, it is working. Uh, Lineage OS 17.0 does not have gaps on it. I can put gaps on it, and I can root it. I just chose not to because I'm literally just going to use it for music. There's no reason for me to go any further with it using uh, gaps or anything like that. I'd rather save the file sizes. I mean, even then, I'll probably be playing my music off of an SD card anyway. Actually has two music apps, I just noticed. That's interesting. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, start. So this is a great video example of just being cocky, honestly. Thinking that something's going to work before you've ever tried it even once. This is the first time I've ever had a GSI fail to the point that it wouldn't even boot and just takes me to fast boot at least on the razor phones it was booting but it was boot looping so i'll talk to you guys later hope you guys enjoyed the little adventure uh i guess this was kind of like a review slash hacking video of the i9 who knows it's a cool phone i love it it's one of my favorite little things i've ever played with so i'm gonna try to make a video about all miniature phones in the future because I have more and we'll talk then about it so peace out